Hello everyone and welcome to the Starts at 60 and Ingenia Lifestyle Masterclass that asks and hopefully answers the question, is now the right time to make a C or a tree change in your life? You'll probably recognise uh, Bill McDonald from his time as newsreader on Channel 7 and Network 10, who's with us today, um, as well as our other hosts uh, that are, that are, or our panellists that are with us. Uh, and I'm going to introduce each of them to you. So, as I said, Bill McDonald, who you, you would know, he's actually interviewed prime ministers, sports stars and entertainment icons throughout his career. And what you might not know is that Bill's passion is real estate. So much so that he now has his real estate agent's license and his auctioneer's license. Welcome, Bill, today. Hi, Rebecca. Great to be with you and great to be with everyone that's joined us. It's um, a really exciting time to be in real estate. <laughs> it sure is. I, I'm looking forward to hearing all about it. Um, introducing our second panellist, Rory Gibson, today. Um, Rory is a well-known Australian journalist. You've probably read his column in Australian newspapers, You've Got Mail. Um, and I think we've all seen and giggled with him for many years. He's recently swapped his suburban house in Brisbane for the quiet life in Yamba, joining the golf club, the surf club, and can often be spotted having a beer while staring out to sea, contemplating life. Rory, welcome. Thanks very much, Rebecca, and uh, hello, everyone. And um, you know, to borrow a line from Bill, there's never been a better time to do downsides. <laughs> and he's living the dream. So it, it's going to make a bit of fun to hear that real life story today. Uh, and then Kate Melrose, uh, who joins us from Ingenia, who has over 25 years experience in the property sector in creating medium to large scale communities. And she's really passionate about providing innovative and integrated living solutions for Australians over the age of 55 and is currently the general manager of sales at Ingenia. Kate, welcome again. Thanks, Beck, and thank you again um, for your, this opportunity. Um, so I really want to thank you all for joining us today. We know that making a tree change or a sea change is a really huge decision in the lives of our community, and having experts like you talk through the pros and cons of it will be really invaluable to our members. Um, to those of you who have logged in for this masterclass, thank you for being a part of the Starts at 60 family. Um, we're going to work this the same way we do other webinars today. Um, you ask questions at any time by using the Q&A button uh, and we're going to do our best to answer as many questions as we can at the bottom of the screen. Um, there's no need to take notes of the masterclass because we'll be able to play this back to you on YouTube at the end of the event uh, and send it out to you by email. Um, and if you're out there on Facebook and you want to submit a question, just pop into the Zoom or our team is actually out there on Facebook as well. Um, so will try and respond with questions if they can. But let's get started. Most of us first heard the word sea change when Australian television program got the same name uh, and debuted on our screens back in 1998 on the ABC. Uh, how many of you guys remember that? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, 23 years, it is now, 23 years. Um, and, and, you know, we fell in love with the, par the characters, Sigrid Thornton, David Wenham, William McInnes, John Howard, Tom Long, uh, Kerry Armstrong. They're, they're just, you know, they're our era, aren't they? Um, and it wasn't long before we were all planning to escape the urban sprawl of the city and head to the fictional small coastal town of Pearl Bay and live out our retirement dreams. Um, then came the tree changes that, that everybody started to want to be like, who headed for more rural retreats in Australia's classic country towns. And both trends haven't slowed. And I think we've really seen during COVID a massive push to the ocean uh, and, the, and the, the hills, right? So with the help of this panel today, we're gonna to answer three big questions for you. Is now a good time to be swapping your big city house for a downsized version in the country or by the beach? What emotional factors should you consider before making the change? And how do you make your dollar go further, further when you make the move? Firstly, I really want to hear it from a first-hand perspective, from somebody who's felt the last, you know, period and, and made a tree change or sea change. I think you're a bit of both, Rory. I think you've kind of, kind of taken both in. Um, Rory, why do you think Australians are in love with the idea of the sea change or tree change? Tell us a bit of a story. Oh, look, I, I, I think for, for sure, well, there's two reasons, I think. Australia is very lucky in that most people have, uh, you know, we're blessed with this amazing environment where, you know, we can do a sea change or a, a tree change. There's many countries just don't have that opportunity. So 
you know, there's, we have plentiful locations which uh, can suit anybody. Um, the other thing, which I think is a deeper cultural thing, is that all our mythology is based around the ocean or the, the country, the outback. Or even though we're a very urbanised society, I think we, we all grow up with Crocodile Dundee and Man from Snowy River and, you know, Captain Cook and Steve Irwin. You know, they're, our cultural heroes are all people who live on the coast or live in the outback. And I think we sit in offices and, you know, in jobs sort of for 40 years dreaming about, you know, <laughs> reconnecting with what our, you know, our, our national mythology is. Apart from the fact it's, you know, just great fun. I'm still dreaming. I got a little longer. It's uh, it's nice to hear your stories in in there. And um, so so, Bill, I want to hear your thoughts next. The data seems to indicate that people are really making a sea change or a tree change right now, and moving away from capital cities. And this is why property markets in regional Australia have been blinding standouts of the last year, um, in a year of uncertainty. You deal with the real estate market every day. So what does this mean for people looking to make this change? Well, just overall, uh, Rebecca, you're absolutely right. Uh, the saying that um, safe as houses has never been true, honestly. Owner-occupiers are driving this boom at the moment, and it's right across the country. It's capital cities, and it's also in the regions as well. You can have a look at some of the data here that's supplied. House values just continue to rise, even rapidly, in the first couple of months of 2021, and there is absolutely no sign of it stopping. It's absolutely a sell-it market right now. And interestingly, the last time we had simultaneous sustained growth in cap cities as well as in the, in the regions was 20, uh, 2009, 2010. And uh, that was post GFC um, with all the stimulus driving things. And hello, here we are again. A lot of government stimulus coming off the back of, uh, of a pandemic. Nationally, 2.1% in February alone, house rises, um, house prices rose. The largest change in monthly house prices since 2003. But the thing is, as you mentioned, have a look at the regions, except of course, Victoria, which has been punished for terrible lockdowns. The sea tree change is well and truly on in earnest. Now, realestate.com.au is the number one search site, I think, as we all know, for property in Australia. Regional markets outperformed the cap city markets with views per listing. Have a look at these stats. City, capital city listings per listing was up 16% at the second half of 2020 during COVID. In the regional areas, that number skyrocketed to 44%. So 16% looking at uh, per listing in cap cities, 44% looking in the regions. And this graph is further proof. Look at the smaller cities in Hobart, Darwin and Canberra. They're thriving as well. And it's all part of this get out of the city, get away from COVID exodus. Great growth in Sydney and Brisbane as well. Brizzy 5%, but those regions, the value is growing there at more than twice the pace of the capital cities. New South Wales, 11%. South Australia and Tassie, double figures. Queensland, 9.2%. Both the coasts in Queensland, Gold and Sunny Coast, uh, are absolutely firing. So overall, combined regions are up 9.4%. The capitals, just 2.6%. And an ex example of the market that I found uh, firsthand, my mum uh, sadly passed away last year and uh, my sister and I, we decided that we would sell our family home, which was a, a tough decision because it, it was our family home for 60 years. Mum lived there uh, all her life. And um, so we put that on the market and we did a four week auction campaign. And it was, it was tricky and difficult and it was emotional because I was about the vendor with my sister and I was also the uh, real estate agent. So a lot of emotion tied up in it. The one month campaign, we had good interest right throughout it's a uh, 32 perch split up, split a block in Windsor, which is 3K out of the CBD. And um, we ended up selling it on the day at auction. We had all the pre-auction talk was about around high eights, maybe nine. We sold it on the day, early December for 950 under the hammer. Now the market has moved that quick since then that I'd be pretty confident in saying that if I could put that back on the market now, I know for sure I'd get uh, over a million probably closer to 1.1 million. That's the, that's the speed of the market and the pricing at the moment. And what's driving all this? Well, we've got um, historically low interest rates. No, money's never been cheaper to buy. We've got a surge of first home buyers also entering the market. And they're coming in because of all the government stimulus packages and incentive packages that are available. Um, and we've got also people that are now looking at the economy and saying, hey, 
things are starting to improve here. Jobs are starting to come back. And, and the big one is the supply and demand. There is supply is just out of this world when it comes to the, to the demand. The demand is just a frenzy at the moment and you can't match that. The, I think per sale, we're down about 34% for stock coming back onto the market. So it gives you some idea of what's just driving these gears in real estate at the moment. But um, I mean, Kate, you've been in for a long time in the, and you've got more experience in the property market than me. Do you see something similar? What are you seeing? Bill, I think you've touched on exactly um, all those issues. It's, it's almost a perfect storm. You've got incredible pent up demand. You've got people coming out and you know, the property market just simply reflects by a psyche and confidence. And right at the moment, you've had all these people sitting at home socially isolated, lots of time, escalating um, technology to sit at home, dream and shop online. And, you know, at the same time, cash savings, they're not lunching, they're not out at dinner, they're not travelling. So you've got social isolation, which drives that bias psyche. People are, you know, we are tribal beings. We want to be connected. And I think as everyone's been forced into, particularly in capital cities, social isolation, they've really sought to consider and curate what that next chapter might be for them. And, you know, look, out of COVID have been some silver linings. You've seen amazing creativity come out of the art sector. Similarly, people are sitting back with time and technology and curating what good looks like for their life at the moment. And, um, you know, and I think in many ways what you'll, you know, the, all the economic factors, the supply, demand, um, maybe even the jitters in the equity market is driving people back into solid bricks and mortar um, that's giving them certainty so is now the right time to sell if you're looking to downsize from a capital city and look at a sea or tree change you know i do think we've got a perfect storm as you say supply is on a 30-year average low so um that's what's you know really underpinning the, the current escalation in prices so it, it really is time to start dreaming it's interesting. We put a survey to the Starts at 60 community just two weeks ago and 8.8% of our community said they were seriously considering downsizing right now, uh, this year. So it's, it's a sentiment shift that maybe is lagging behind the, the, the buyer demand shift, but it's fascinating that so many people are showing an interest. Um, and, you know, that I guess I now want to ask um, if I can, Kate, I've heard in the past that many people who downsize are, aren't keen to move far from their current suburb because they want to have, I guess, and, and this is probably a bit of a reference that, of the old world assumptions. They want to have the, the hospital, the big shopping centre and the services they're used to nearby. Now, I like to argue this point that it's not actually true of the new modern baby <laughs> movement that's changing their, changing their game and that changed the world, but I want to hear it from you in the real market. Do you think this is a key barrier or a consideration you come across at Ingenio when talking to people who are thinking about a sea change or a tree change? Because all my family left the cities, left us alone in the cities and said, we don't want to be your babysitters. We don't want to do all your stuff for you. We're going to have our life. And I think you hit the nail on the head. Baby boomers are changing the cycle of how people downsize. And, you know, Australia is not unique. Internationally, baby boomers are going to do it differently. They're... Um, empowered, they continue to change things. I think um, they want to get in control of their life. They don't, as you say, want to be around and be the babysitter. What, you know, downsizing people tend to either stay in the community they know and love, where they know the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, they've got those networks. What we're seeing is a trend to baby boomers actually, who have more recently placed mum and dad in care, turning around and saying, I'm not, I, we're taking control of this, we're been in control of everything in our life. What we want is control, choice, flexibility, and we're going to make the decision earlier. So we're seeing a reversal of that trend to defer downsizing. They're not downsizing to retirement villages, but they're downsizing to active lifestyle communities where they've got choice and control. They've got options if they need care solutions into the future, but um, it is all about the lifestyle. To your point, Beck, on there was always a perception that rural and regional areas and coastal areas were underserviced from a social infrastructure perspective, medical supplies, hospitals. And I think if you look at any of the major regions, um, Coffs Harbour, Harvey Bay, um, Newcastle, right up and down the coast, Victoria, the volume of infrastructure in major capital cities now, or major regional areas has really escalated. 
On top of that, the gift from COVID is technology and the massive growth in services of um, medical infrastructure over the internet. So I think people are not seeing regional locations as negative anymore. It's really almost coming back to smaller, safer, more connected groups of people. And I think COVID has really driven that sense of wanting to belong and be in a small group. I think I, I, you know, I completely concur from what I see every day in, in Starts at 60. But Rory, you've just made the shift and um, you didn't at the beginning tell us about your story of, of migrating to Yamba recently. So I'm just going to cut back and get you to, to sprinkle a bit of your sea change story in here and, and a bit of a, the personal experience that you had in thinking about what you were looking for when you moved to the sea. Yeah, sure. Look, uh, you know, my... I, and I, look, I urge every Australian to have this conversation with themselves and, and it's that conversation of knowing, you know, or, or pinpointing that moment in your life where, where time becomes more important than money. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that, you know, people who've read my column know that uh, that point came crashing home to me when my, my wife died quite young, age 47 of uh, cancer. And, uh, and it just changed everything in terms of how I thought I should live my life because yeah, we all know there's no guarantee. So I'd spent years sitting in uh, the newsroom at uh, the Courier Mail in Brisbane, um, enjoying it and enjoying my colleagues and city life and raising children. But I started daydreaming about, you know, where I wanted to live. And we'd always come on family holidays to Yamba, where I now live. Um, and my sons, our three sons love it there. They sort of learned how to surf there. It's a fantastic little community, uh, for those who don't know it, it's sort of uh, about an hour south of uh, Ballina in northern, the northern rivers of New South Wales. And, um, and that's, I just kept, uh, you know, I want to live there. I want to be part of that small community. There's only about 6,000 people. Um, it's a three hour drive south of Brisbane, so it wasn't too far away from my kids, but it's sort of far enough away that they can't raid my fridge every night, but close <laughs> enough that they can come and visit on the weekend. Send and the grandkids um, just for a short sprinkling of fun. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they make the effort because uh, it's a lovely... And I, what I found is having moved to, uh, you know, a sea change location is, in fact, <laughs> I get more visitors. No one ever used to come and visit me when I was in Brisbane. Now I can't keep them away. Uh, like, I never get... Someone asked me, uh, you know, do I ever get lonely? And I said, actually, it's the opposite. I actually look <laughs> forward to having a bit of time for myself. And I, I love having visitors come from Brizzy or Sydney or wherever. Um, but I'm really enjoying being part of a smaller community. I've, I've joined the surf club and I've been, you know, done the bronze medallion and now I do patrols at Main Beach and uh, I joined the golf club and, you know, it, I came here knowing no one, absolutely no one. And uh, I now have a massive friendship group, thanks to, in part to COVID, I have to say, because it forced me to, to you know, um, be active in the community instead of just always going off to an airport and jetting overseas. And it's a gift that that whole lockdown thing has, has given me. Can I quickly ask, did you think about ageing in place as you moved there, about the health and the facilities and the things you needed um, in your future? And Yeah, yeah, I did. And, uh, yeah, it's one of the... I think we touched on... Um, you know, Kate touched on this, is that um, you're not isolated in Australia anymore. You know, you can shop for anything online and it'll turn up on your door three days later. Medical facilities, uh, sure, there's no massive hospital in Yamba, but there are ambulance services and there are nearby small hospitals. And if your yes, medical emergency escalates, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the helicopter will come and get you and you're up at the Gold Coast, you know, um, university hospital there. So, uh, and you know, there's a lot of telephone and online medical services available to you. So. It's a lot different than it was 20 years ago. Uh, to your point about culture, a lot of people think, oh, there's no culture in the regions. I, I find that to be, it's, a, it's, well, it's only said by people who've never lived in a regional area. Like, mm -hmm. I, if I want to go and see the Book of Mormon or, you know, um, Hamilton, I literally just jump in the car, drive up to Ballina, I'm on, I'm on a plane to Melbourne or Sydney, I'm there within an hour, I can see the, the play, go and see my mates, you know, stay at one of their places and I'm back home in Yamba the next day. It's, you, you do not miss out on anything, but you gain so much uh, from the lifestyle you have, the, the outdoors. Like I literally, I literally just came to the conclusion that I never wanted to see concrete cars or buildings much <laughs> again. I just wanted to see ocean, yeah. sky and 
Tree. You're a poster child for early retirement, Rory. <laughs> I honestly, you can't do it soon enough. Oh, and it's wonderful. I've got I've got a secret guest that we've been hiding behind the scenes here as well today. Um, and I really thank you for sharing that that personal experience, Rory, because I think it's really great to have honesty about the experience of of making the move. Um, I want to introduce to you Bob Breen. He's he's just off screen and he's going to drop in to our screens now. There you go, there Bob. Here he is, hello Bob. Um, Bob is an associate professor at Deakin University um, and he's a special guest with us today. He's received the Order of Australia Medal three years ago. He's off, he's <laughs> come out of the closet. The, <laughs> the fun parts <laughs> of the internet. <laughs> um, and that might be the draft to his fantastic new book in the background there. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Yeah. Now, Bob's been living at Plantations by Ingenia Lifestyle in Woolgoolga for two years after making the move from Canberra. And, and Bob has, I guess, a really honest and, and personal story to tell us as well, which is, is what we love to hear. Um, Bob, tell us about your sea change from the capital city to the coast and what motivated you to make the switch. Well, this is a romantic story um, of uh, Rhonda <laughs> living that. at Jimboomba near Brisbane and uh, myself living in Canberra, uh, cold old Canberra. And uh, we met at a dinner party uh, three years ago, which ironically was there to celebrate uh, my getting a medal for the Order of Australia. And both of us had had um, a couple of painful years of adjusting to being alone after losing our partners to serious illness. So um, we weren't particularly looking for another partner, but uh, these things happen, and uh, after an awkward reminder of how to do this sort of thing, I, I got a mobile phone number, realising she lived at Jim Boomba and wondering, well, that was probably going to be difficult to organise. Uh, however, I had a friend at Mount Tambourine, so I made up a, a totally uh, 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 concocted story uh, that I was just coincidentally coming up that way, could we go to lunch? And, and kind of the rest is history from there. Um, eventually seeing me after an, a number of months of, uh, of courting and doing my best at my age to appear romantic and inviting and, um, and, uh, and Rhonda sort of said, look, I'm not looking for any of, uh, you know, a new partner really. And she was a bit stuck in a large property, um, having to maintain a pool and with her uh, uh, late husband's uh, workshop there getting dusty and, and um, a sad reminder, I guess, of a happier life that she had had. Um, so both of us sort of said, well, we would like to sort of commit to a future together. And what we really shared was an idea that, and she knew that right from the beginning that she would have to move from her home at some stage. I already had moved and downsized to a, uh, a, a flat overlooking Lake Burley Griffin in Canberra. So I had sort of taken that step. Um, and we said we would go to somewhere on the coast. Um, and... Uh, uh, eventually sort of started to look at options along the coast. And I guess um, uh, that's how the decision came to move. But I'll stop the story there and we can talk a little bit more later um, about um, what we've found after we made that move. I, I just love it. Um, I, I, what a, a fabulous romance and, and I guess a real life story that um, you, you can't you can't find those stories in, in real life and unless we have these secret guests. Well, I'm really pleased you could join us today. Yeah. Um, I do have a couple of other questions about your experience because I think the journey to find somewhere away from your current home is something that the people that are attending today want to hear more about. So I, I'd like to ask a little bit more. Why why did you and how did you decide on Woolgoolga and Plantations well, we, by Ingenia as well? So mm. Well, we certainly started out not thinking of a, an over 55s lifestyle resort at all. Um, we kind of had this dream that we probably could throw our resources together and, and get a house that overlooked the sea. Uh, quickly defined the reality check was that um, you needed a lazy $2 million probably to do what we wanted to do. So that kind of vision wasn't there. But Rhonda, um, the sister of her sister-in-law, who'd uh, lost her partner some, uh, lost her brother some years ago, um, was moving into plantations. Um, and so we, we essentially met with them and then went to a beach party at, uh, at Coffs Harbour, sponsored by Ingenia, and uh, did our own little survey of why are you all doing this? And, and found that um, the, the common trend was that they were realising that at some point they would have to declutter. 
at some point, uh, one of a couple might be by themselves and maybe find themselves in a large family home, having to declutter, having to find out who the new by themselves person was going to be and, um, and possibly lonely. Um, and at the same time, um, uh, they might have health issues as well. So isolated in a community. So um, what I guess came together was an idea that um, we were planning a life together. Did we want to go into uh, a home that looked over the sea in a suburb that we may not have, would not have known anyone from the beginning and no real um, uh, community pushing together or coming together? And uh, we could see already the, the friendships being made and the fun being had by others who are contemplating moving to plantations. So we, we decided that even though we hadn't quite thought of that option, that came to us as, as probably one that we would embark on. Uh, I mean, it's really exciting to hear that you found your way there. I think it's a, a very well-kept secret how, um, how much lifestyle you get in communities like Ingenia Create. And I, I do want to throw to Rory here because he had a, he's had a different downsizing journey so far um, and um, bought a house in Yamba. I guess I'm very interested just to, to hear a bit more of your decision-making process there, Rory, so that we can reflect it against Bob's. And did you ever come across lifestyle communities on your journey even yet along uh, the way? Yeah, yes, I did, Rebecca. I mean, in my job as a journalist, a couple of, about a year ago, I, uh, um, I actually spent a couple of days, uh, I think it was Bundaberg, and was doing a whole series of stories on lifestyle communities. Um, and I, I knew nothing about them. I just, it was just so far out of my... Um, scope of thinking, but you know, I went in there with a you know a journalist's open mind, and after five days of sort of talking to people in these communities and seeing how they live their life, and uh, I, I, it was it was I just I actually can't wait <laughs> to that stage of life where I can get into them because I kept talk, interviewing people and they'd be going, you know, hurry up, Sonny, I've got you know we're catching the bus into town on my shopping trip, or you know I'm going to go and play bowls with my mates, and you know you know, your 15 minutes is up and everyone was so happy. They had and a lot of people had come to those communities alone. Like they were living in their own homes or, you know, their partners had died and they were just, their family had all moved away. Some people came from, and they're quite honest about how isolated they felt and they joined these communities and it, it just created a new lease of life for them, which I found really endearing and, and encouraging actually. And, uh, and through all those stages, whether well, those, you know, the over 55s lifestyle communities all the way up to, you know, the, the ones that cater for people later in life. And uh, it gave me a lot of, I know there's a, you know, there's, they can attract, you know, some of those aged care facilities um, uh, are under the spotlight at the moment, but uh, the lifestyle communities. Very, very different, mm. <laughs> very different, very um, different, very different sector. It's amazing yeah. how far away from this sector that is. Um, yeah. But Kate, you have seen, quite a lot of people uh, like Rory, who you actually see, uh, I guess, bounce again and, and look, they buy the big a big apartment or something near the beach and then they reconsider with the isolation and and, and you, you have a bit of a name for it, don't you? <laughs> look, yeah, we've, we've seen not only a lot of people coming and, and look, I think buyers in, li in our lifestyle communities, um, regional areas are up about 20% um, on pre-COVID. And I think um, Rory and Bob have both referred to so often that's driven from a loss of connection, be it through a sadness and a loss of a partner or a loss of connection. And in many ways, COVID has been that loss of connection and that's driven them to seek um, a solution that is, is a sense of belonging. Um, and what we've found in them is even many people who've already moved or downsized to a regional area some 10 years ago, they've cashed out of capital cities or cashed out of Sydney and Brisbane, are also then in the next chapter looking at, well, okay, hey, this is actually getting really busy around here. Um, and we're seeing at Latitude One at Port Stephens, at um, plantations at Mulgoga, a lot of people that are doing a second bounce, a double bounce downside. I love how you call it that. <laughs> they're really looking for um, just a little bit a little bit more money in the pocket, a little bit more fun money, a little bit more money to tick off the bucket list. And also seeking, as Rory well um, commented, not only seeking um, the new house, a bit more money in the bank, but they're really seeking that more intimate um, sense of belonging. 
bit more of an organized sort of community and, and place to go, hey? I mean, it's beautiful. Bob, you've been in the mid north coast of New South Wales for two years. Do you think you made the right decision? Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, 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 Rhonda couldn't be here and she said, you must tell them what I told uh, a number of people is that if we won Tats Lotto, we would not move from here, but we would travel around the world first class. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, so I guess the, 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 the thing that makes the enormous difference for both of us coming together in the latter part of our lives with a whole lot of life lived behind us in different circumstances with a whole different circle of friends is you don't expect in a way to make new friends as a couple that have met and decided to commit to each other so late in life. What we've began to do here was connect to a community almost sort of forged in the, in the slight adversity of sort of finding a way, settling in together all around the same time. And I, I belong to the sort of the, the first release people and, mm -hmm. and we tell stories of our wagons and our horses coming up and, and finding ourselves in the frontier and all of that when uh, the pool wasn't open and the clubhouse was not there either. And, and we've become quite bonded and quite friendly. And, and things that I guess have gone from past communities, uh, are we have street parties, we, we have um, wonderful social gatherings and connections uh, and just fun, um, uh, which I don't think is characterised uh, by our age and our stage normally. And, and there's a very, very big difference between what I'm doing or what Ronnie and I are doing now um, as a lifestyle choice to a sort of, in a way, quietening down and, and sort of kind of admitting we have got a number there that sort of tells us how old we are. We, we just don't feel that age. And we're with people that also have that energy. The other part of that too, and, and um, uh, I think was mentioned that, that there are people who come in who are single uh, for a reason, you know, a range of circumstances and sadly often a partner that has parted. Well, they're embraced as well, so warmly and uh, inclusively. Something that probably would have been really difficult out there in the broader community is that uh, all of us in this community have lived enough of life to understand that it's got its high points and its low points and some of us have lived through some, some low seasons and we're all sort of making it the new season. So there's a whole lot of sort of silly stuff that goes on like a Bollywood party in the street where we, in Wulgulga, you can find all sorts of Indian <laughs> outfits. We did and we decided that was the way we wanted to go and we just had a fine time uh, dressing up and being silly. Well, that's something that probably wouldn't happen anywhere else uh, spontaneously in a suburban street. And Bob, oh, some, that's of those, magic. some of those street parties in the middle of COVID were truly the antithesis of yes. what a lot of people were doing in Australia, sitting at home by themselves and... Um, I have some, seen some hilarious videos of some of your comrades in arms dancing in the streets. Um, oh, you've got to send them in. Socially you've got to send them in. They're just <laughs> wonderful. It truly really is. Plays to yeah. the sense of that, that spirit when people are, are co located. Um, Kate, I wanted to ask you to, to talk, I guess, in in more ingenious way about what a life inside these communities is like that you try to mould. I mean, I guess the the whole concept of engineers that you work hard to do this. Um, yeah, and look, got, absolutely. You've got a specific community coming forth in Port Stephens that you were going to tell us a little bit about. For sure. Look, I think um, in many ways, um, oh, and there's a, a little bit of a taste of what life in one of our communities is about. At the end of the day, you know, when people are at this chapter of downsizing and really getting back in the driver's seat of life and really curating what they want that next chapter to look like, um, they've worked really hard. And what I often hear from people is we've worked really hard um, for our money. We want to retain our money. And I think there's three factors. One is what my life's going to be like. Am I going to be connected? Am I going to be with great like-minded people and a sense of belonging? Um, and what, what are the sort of events and activities that are on my doorstep? And, and at the end of the day, we're creating a canvas for people to have incredible conversations and to create some fabulous memories. So, you know, on the screen at the moment is a taste of one of our communities at Latitude One. Um, and land lease communities have come a long way. I think they did evolve originally out of caravan park conversions. And I think if people haven't been out to touch and feel one of the more recent lifestyle communities, really need to come to it because they are an incredible canvas for you to curate a great life ahead. Um, you can do as much or as little as you want. Latitude One's got theatre, gym, wellness centres, bowling, 
Um, I know they're running some fantastic dinners at the moment. Um, they've got a yacht club. They've got Cluckingham Palace, which is um, all the chickens, and um, and they're doing some amazing things um, with the vegetable garden. You know, there is as much, but it also recognises everyone has their own life as well. So people are still connected with their community. A lot of people are still working very much as hobbies um, in either paid or unpaid work. So it's um, moving into an area you might downsize your home and um, put more money in the bank, but you've also got assets where friends and family can come and visit. The other element is just for simplicity, the model makes a lot of sense. Um, we've spent a lot of time listening to people and they're really saying, look, worked hard for our money, we want to retain it, we don't want to pay an exit fee. And at the end of the day, the land lease model, where you purchase your home, you lease the land, means that you put more money in the, in the bank or more money to holiday with and tuck, tick off the bucket list. But it's a very simple model. So if you choose to sell out, and a lot of people are double bouncing, if we call it, even within our communities, we've got people who have come in and we've got a gorgeous another wedding story in Victoria where a couple moved in because that's separated and they both purchased it um, separately. The joy of being connected in a community, they actually have now gotten married and we've hosted their wedding down in Lara in Victoria. And they've upgraded because there's no cost to sell out of your home. They've sold their two smaller homes and bought a bigger home back together. So, you awesome. know, there's, there's lots of wonderful um, stories that come out of it. But I think the essence is the land lease model is simple and it gives people, you know, flexibility. There's no That's... ingoing costs. There's no exit costs. Um, there's only what you choose to pay for your house. And that can be from 250000 up to nearly a million dollars. And your weekly rent. There's no council rates. There's no body corporate fees. So people can really bank what their future costs are. And I think when people retire or start to dial down work, they really want certainty around those payments. So I think that's where um, the model we'll is. We'll get made. to some of those payments in a set and put them on the screen, I think, because I think that is a really helpful piece of insight. People assume all models are the same in this industry and they're definitely not in land lease. So before we do, Bill... City prices. Oh, we have to be to get into these communities. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I reckon say, you're not far off, Bill. <laughs> it's getting very close to us. I was say, I've got some friends that left it until their early 70s to move, and they moved into something which is nice. They love it. They've never been busier. They've made all these new friends. But the ingenious model just sounds like it was tailor made for them. Um, so I wish they had an opportunity, and, and, and perhaps this was a while ago they did it. But we've been to their place many times and thought. How, how old do you have to be to get into this place? They have activities every every other day. They have something to something to do every moment, everywhere they turn. And um, oh, look, I just think it's fantastic. I can't wait. Um, <laughs> now I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take us back into the script because I know we're gonna run out of time with all this all right. fun. <laughs> but I have I have all these questions that people have sent in that I need to get to, and they're queuing up in the, in the back of my my. Uh, my document ahead of me. So Bill, I would like to help everybody understand the difference between the city prices and the seaside uh, prices at the moment and you know what it feels like for everybody with their dollars. I mean, when we've, we've talked about all the emotional and social reasons here today a lot, but the dollars are really a big talking point for why to move to the regions as well, aren't they? Absolutely, uh, and um, this is the perfect time if you want to downsize now, cash in on the value of your capital city property. Um, you're never going to get a better time to have that sea or tree change if you want to go early. And I think a lot of people have had a taste of it through COVID and they go, you know what, I like the taste of that. There's no reason I can't go a bit earlier. This is your time because um, you know it's a seller's market. So you can sell high, you'll, put, you'll have a lot of money and you'll always get better bang for buck if you're buying in the regions. And just look at those numbers there, Sydney versus New South Wales, you're like you're over 500,000 better off. This is median house prices, mm -hmm. over 370,000 better off of Victoria. Not so much in Queensland, but still a fair whack of money. So if you want to sell now because of the market, you'll sell high, you'll get top dollar for your property. You'll also sell quick, so you'll get some certainty. Um, because a lot of the auctions as well, they're, they're going from four week campaigns, which I mentioned with my mother's house, they're, they've shrunk down now to two weeks. And in one case, I know a, an agent that has had a five day campaign because the volume of buyers in the market is, is that great that they only needed five days to get enough people through it and have a look at it. They did a five day auction campaign, which is unheard of. So they're the median house prices. As I said, 
the supply to the demand is just, it's, it's, un, it's unmatched. So people are in a frenzy to buy property at the moment. So you'll sell high, you'll sell quick, you'll have the money in the bank. The choice will be yours as to what you do with it. If you go and buy regional, you'll be putting a lot of money back in the bank and you'll pick up a great lifestyle. You'll pick up usually more property, um, more house, if that's what you're wanting. You'll pick up a nice location. You'll pick up some peace of mind and some serenity and you'll have the... Um, you'll have a peace of mind to know that you've got money in the bank to fund the lifestyle once you get into that property. So it's a no brainer at the moment. But I mean, we, we often ask our community what they want at the turning point of life and they come back saying they'd like to have a nice low maintenance place to live with a community around them, more stuff to do a big giant trip or maybe 10 of them. If they could manage, you know, big holidays overseas, the regular cruising, the, the things they want, you've got to free up a bit of cash to do that out of the big house. And I think that um, Kate, tell us how money works um, in a land lease community, because it's, it's a bit different and it's not something anybody ever unhooks and tells you all the truth of until you ask. Look, um, I think land lease communities, and, and I will draw the distinction, they are different in, in the legislative structure to a traditional retirement community. And, um, and you know, it is very simple. It's when you look to purchase, there's only two costs. There's um, in, in engineer communities, it's what you choose to pay for the house and then your land rent. And that land rent is an ongoing weekly rent. The thing that's very unique is, um, Commonwealth Rent Assistance, which is one of the most generous of the government subsidies, if you qualify for a pension in any form, you also qualify for that rent assistance. So your weekly rent is actually subsidised by, um, by the Commonwealth um, government, so which makes it incredibly affordable. So whether you're purchasing one of our very luxury, you know, exclusive homes or you're, you're purchasing one of our fantastic, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollar homes, um, at the end of the day, your ongoing rental is being subsidised by the government, if, you know, particularly if you're a pensioner. So if you do choose to sell out, and I think that's one of the things, is people are fearful of, am I going to fit in? Are these going to be my people? And I think one of the things that gives flexibility is, you know, you can just sell. You can sell as you sell your normal home with an agent up the road. There's no constraints on, on you selling out and you keep 100% of the capital gain. The prices of homes within our community generally track in line with local real estate property um so you know at the moment though i have to say supply and demand we can't get enough of these communities coming to the market so um you know prices you know will reflect that over time that's uh makes perfect sense i i think um and you've already told us a heap about the community benefits of of living in a community um so i i guess the the lifestyle is there anything else that we've missed today kate in in things that people haven't heard about in... No, look, I think if anyone is, you know, if you're sitting at home thinking, what are the options available? I can stay in my existing home and for some that's a wonderful solution. I can move in with family. That works for some, it doesn't work for others. Um, downsizing into an apartment, for sure. And one of the, you know, but, you know, you may well get that special levy um, that, you know, um, um, you're not expecting. Um, I would just suggest Go and try. Go and go to an event. Go to events around a whole range of different communities. Go and just feel it. You know, try it on for size because it's as much about the people and the community as it is about the house and the financial model. So I, I and... often relate this stage of life to, and everybody will remember when they put their kids into school and they went around to yes. school communities and they went to open days totally. and they went and had a look. And that's the last time most people went and had a look around. And this industry really does have all of that going on. It has events you can come and have a look inside without any commitment. Um, you don't have to go and, and be sold a product. You can just go and hang around and see um, and chat with people. And, and I, I think people and don't think, necessarily realise it. I think that's right, Beck. And, and we do a lot of research, but the, one of the major things we keep hearing from people is, I don't want to be locked into where I'm going till I know how much money I've got from my house. And I don't want to sell my house and not know where I'm going. So, you know, that for many people is the greatest stress and the greatest cause of concern and the barrier to making a change. So, you know, um, I know Bob will tell you at Ingenia, we have a very simple easy move package where $1,000 can reserve your opportunity. First Choice Club, $3,000 is your total deposit. That's all that you require. And once you've chosen your home, 
things change at this chapter. A child might have a baby in another location. All of a sudden, you've got to go there. There might be health issues. Circumstances change. Um, that deposit is fully refundable up until when you move in. So I think, um, and it's conditional upon you selling your home. So I think it is all about just making that downsized decision simple for people and removing the fears and concerns and, you know, knowing that you're not locked in until you're absolutely certain and ready to move in. That's really good to know. Um, I would love to throw to Bill because we all love to hear it. We're, we're Australians. We love to hear about the real estate market. I don't know about you, but I always love to hear about it. What do you see in the next 12 months? Tell us about uh, well, the market. I was going to say, as well, backing up off Kate, I think one of the great endorsements is it's just listening to Bob. I mean, Bob's an intelligent fellow. He's an academic. And, and to hear someone like Bob that I know would have done all the homework, he would have, he would have compared and crunched the numbers. So that side of it makes you feel, should make you feel really confident. And then to see how happy he is, that's the main thing. I think that's the biggest mm -hmm. thing you've got to think of. What's going to make me happy? Where am I going to be that I'm going to be happy? And Bob seems like he's as happy as a lark. And it's just a wonderful <laughs> story that he's found love. Look at him and, grinning like a Cheshire cat. But right? I'm, even, <laughs> well, I'm even getting married here at Plantation. So Please. there you go. Oh, awesome. <laughs> that's fantastic. Decided to, to make an honest woman of her. And, uh, and she decided that she'll get married again too. So that's that's even another bit of icing on a lovely cake. <laughs> that's really well, that's lovely. fantastic. Look, so I thought I'd do a bit of a, when you talk about the market looking forward, where it's going, a bit of a SWOT analysis. So the strengths at the moment, uh, continued price growth. If you look at your owner and you want to sell, continued price growth to the point where maybe even regulators, someone at some stage may have to pull the reins back and say, hey, whoa, this is just overcooking. But the market's going to continue further ahead. The big banks agree. Um, I think Bill Evans, the chief economist at Westpac, has uh, come out and endorsed that he thinks there'll be a 10% uh, increase in house values this year and another 10% in 2022, which is phenomenal. So somewhere along the line, they'll have to pull the brakes on and, and prevent inflation happening. It's crazy to think of all this at the moment, but the banks think there's a lot of confidence and buoyancy in the market as well. Uh, auction clearance rate is another area that gives us a lot of strength. The auction clearance rates are at unprecedented levels. I mean, Brisbane's not a strong um, historical auction market. It's gone from one point, the clearance rates in Brisbane last year at one point were about 44% during the peak of COVID. Uh, they've now got up to nearly 80%. So auction is very much becoming the way of things in the Brisbane market. Every other market auction clearance rates are up, except of course, Victoria, poor old Victoria, they're just so far behind after the, after the lockdown dramas. So all the auction rates are up. It's clearly the way to sell your property at the moment when there's low stock, high demand, put it out to competition, get the emotional buyers in. That's where you get the big money. So auctions are a real strength at the moment. Many properties are selling either before auction or they're going for well over reserve on the day. Uh, the regions as well, we talked about the regions. The clearance rates for Geelong in Victoria, 93%. Uh, Illawarra, New South Wales, 100% at the moment. Newcastle, Lake Macquarie, 76, and it's 80 and 94 on the Golden Sunshine Coast. They're just phenomenal numbers. So the confidence in the market is very high. The demand is there. Um, the weaknesses, I can't see too many. The, the biggest weakness I think would be if we had another major outbreak of COVID and um, we had to go into lockdowns again and um, that meant job losses and, and business was hurt. Um, the unit market hasn't been strong, but we don't worry too much about the unit market at the moment. The opportunities, we've talked about those. You can make an absolute packet if you've been sitting on your property in the city and you want to cash out and go to the beach or go to somewhere near the bush. That's the great opportunity. The opportunity to have a, um, a, a sea or tree change, it can come early, it can happen right now. Uh, the threats, uh, as I said, another major COVID outbreak. Um, interest rates rising, that's unlikely for, for many years. Um, and there may be a small drop off when Job Seeker and um, finishes at the end of the month and when the bank mortgage holidays also end, but they're not tipping that to be too much of a uh, an impact on the property market at the moment. So that's how I see it. Uh, time that's, to take a tree change and a sea change is now. Uh, and it's a good time to sell by the sound of it. And 8.8% .8 of our community are definitely curious and wanting to know, which I think is, um, I, I think that's always fun to see when people are ready. There's a thing um, about now as well, I should touch on quickly, sorry to cut you off. When we're experiencing this ourselves, uh, we're, we're, we're considering uh, a change and because the market is so good, but there's a thing now called FOMO, fear of moving on. Because <laughs> people are worried thinking, oh, if I'm gonna sell, 
if I'm going to buy back in the same market, can, will I have the same opportunities? Will I get the same property? Am I going to have to settle for less? So there's a bit of FOMO coming into the market as well, which why if you sell now, it makes a lot of sense. You'll get rid of the FOMO if you're going to the regions or going somewhere else because you get uh, more value for money. It's the next life, isn't it? For a lot of people here, this is a big dream move, you know, and I think that that's actually the bit I watched my parents all do it. They, they counted down the days to make the move to the, to the beaches and, and to their dreams. Rory, um, I'm sure you've got a little bit to add here. <laughs> well, look, I, you know, I run into a, a lot of people, uh, you know, at the golf club who are a bit older than me who all wish they'd, um, retired sooner or moved sooner uh even though they're quite healthy now they just i think people fomo is right there's a fear of moving on and like i sold my house in brisbane when the market wasn't hot and you know i i sort of uh str you know stress out about that but by doing that it had, I, I basically um was then able by selling that house even for less money than i you know, ex you know wished i'd got it enabled me to buy the place I really wanted in Yamba. And like my dream was always to be able to lie in bed at night and hear the ocean hit the, the beach. And uh, so sure, I, I didn't end up with, you know, that much money in the bank, but I ended up in the place I always dreamed of living. And I like, if I can give you, you know, one piece of advice and that is don't hesitate. Like it doesn't matter whether the market's booming now or it softens or whatever. When you decide you want to move, move. Uh, it's a it's a wonderful wonderful stage of your life. I want what you've got, Rory. That sounds great. I've got FOMO at the moment. I want what you've got. <laughs> <laughs> I need the courage to do it. <laughs> I've got you many more years it. of raising children. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, well, look, I'm, they won't leave home, so I left home. <laughs> Very nice. That, that's we really hear good. that all the time. And people are replying in our chat room in response to all of you with amazing comments. So. Um, I have to move us on to the audience questions now, um, because while we've been talking, people have been submitting Q&A into the box, um, and that's all been brought together for me. Um, so let's move on. Thank you to everybody who's put those questions in. Our first question is for Bill around timing. One reader asks, should I sell my three bedroom Sydney townhouse while looking for a Newcastle apartment to buy, or try and buy it during the six week settlement period? I may or may not get a buyer immediately and it's hard to buy my new apartment until I have that certainty. If you've got uncertainty like that, my, my advice always to people that have asked that, and I've had a couple of people that have wanted to buy a property that we've had on listed on the market and uh, they're wavering. And I always say, if you've got a property and you, you want to sell it and you're going to sell it, sell that first. So you know what you've got to play with. So you've got the certainty of knowing that the house is sold. I've got, I've got the money in the bank. This is what I've got to play with. And then you can go and shop and look for places knowing what your limits are. And then you take the stress out of it as well. I had one gentleman that he kept coming to me. It must have come for about a month every weekend. And, and he'd say, I found a new place. I found a new place. I go, what do you want to do? And he said, well, I can't do anything because I have to sell my house. I said, well, I keep telling you that every week. Sell so you know what you've got because he couldn't borrow. So he needed his funds to buy the property. I said, well, you've got the cart before the horse. You want to buy the house, but your funds are tied up. So that's my advice. Sell. So you've got the certainty of knowing that it's, uh, it's unconditional. That's your money you've got to play with. And then go and, um, and shop accordingly. Thank you, Bill. That's a really great segue to the next question, which is for Kate. Um, and it's from a reader who wants to downsize to a lifestyle community like the ones in Genia Manager. My wife and I want to move into a lifestyle village. However, we do not have the funds until we sell our house and there may well be a shortfall in the purchase. So we will need to finance. Um, so this person wants some more insight. For sure. Um, there is a new exciting um, product coming into the market that would enable you to bridge the gap. Um, and um, so yeah, there, there is solutions for you to borrow um, to move into a lifestyle community. Particularly what we find often is a lot of people have got funds tied up either in fixed interest or in their superannuation and they're, and they're wanting to move a little bit earlier. And so there are finance products um, becoming available that will help you get on with living the lifestyle and, um, and bridge that gap between now and when your super may be available or other funds may become available. 
And you talked about the no risk deposits as well before. So that probably comes in here too, doesn't it? Absolutely. And I was going to say to Bill's comment before, certainly his advice is, is the right one if you're buying any other standard real estate product. The reason that um, Ingenia has made our easy move product so easy um, is to let you secure where you're going and then go and sell your house. So your purchase with Ingenia is conditional upon you then selling your home because to us in all of our research and spending a lot of time listening to what causes angst, that was the number one thing that, that stopped people taking control. So, um, you know, it is a bit different with a lifestyle community. Um, you can purchase, secure your option before you sell your home without, um, without a risk of loss either way. That's awesome. Thank you, Kate. Bob, I've got another one for you. Mm -hmm. um, our community member has asked if you could detail the many considerations you had um, as you were considering the move. Um, and could you give us some more details of all the factors you considered? Well, well certainly the first uh, uh, decision you have to make is how much money you want to spend um, and um, what you're going to do with the, the money that's available to you. Now, before COVID, of course, we were going to free up uh, capital for both of us to travel um, uh, as a long, long honeymoon and, um, and, and take the world uh, as we wanted to. The second, of course, is to look at uh, the place and was that place going to uh, actually have the options that we would like for this sort of last quarter of, of life in terms of um, uh, a, a comfortable lifestyle that we both felt that we kind of earned and were prepared and wanted to enjoy. And Coffs Harbour is close to us here at Woolgoolga. Um, it has a wonderful uh, base hospital, which I guess is one of those sobering considerations when you make a decision on where to go. Uh, and that's not far away. Uh, but also it's got a lively arts and uh, entertainment community um, and live music is a big part of what Ronnie and I like to do. Uh, we've got that locally here in Woolgoolga. Um, uh, 26 places to eat in Woolgoolga. You wouldn't think that, but that is so. Uh, not, not that we go around eating and trying to put on weight, but nonetheless, it's giving a range of options and there's a lot of hospitality associated with eating. So it's, it's where you meet and what you do. Um, important considerations, of course, that I mentioned before were connection. Uh, what, what were the prospects of connection? And they just seemed to be uh, a given. You, you were going to connect. It would be up to you as to whether you wanted to exclude yourself and then people would be getting you out of your uh, out of your home to come on and enjoy yourself up at the clubhouse. So um, these decisions, which began, you know, with hard financial uh, reasonings, uh, we found it very affordable here. We, we couldn't have afforded and really had the surplus we needed to sort of throw $2 million at a, at a place with a view of the sea. We are so close to the sea here anyway, in fact, have a lovely view of trees uh, out the back, um, that um, we now have a lot more options uh, that's been created and a connection to a community and not far away from all the things that we'd like to enjoy for the remainder of our lives. That's fantastic. I am, so we're almost out of time, guys. I'm gonna rush us through the last couple of questions because we have a couple more to go. Um, my next one now is a bit of a philosophical one for Rory. A viewer is musing. Aging means that we may actually want to be close to our children and grandchildren in the future. It may not be realistic at that point to expect them to travel six hours or more to visit the weekend, visit at the weekend because we've moved to a regional area. It's not easy to find the answer. What do you reckon, Rory? Did you think about later life in your boys when you made the move? Oh, absolutely. And uh, <clears throat> you know, to a point that uh, Bill made, I. I rented for two years in Yamba uh, to see how that would look. I, you know, I wanted to be near enough to my sons that they would visit and I could visit them if necessary. And, um, you know, and I think you need to take into uh, account all those factors. Like being on holiday somewhere is completely different to living somewhere. So I think you need to be A, sure that uh, that wonderful place you have in your head is like, you know, your post working life uh, you know, paradise. It may not be that if uh, you have to live there all the time and you're too far away from your friends and the people you love and your children. So I road tested where I went, to, where, where I went down to, uh, to Yamber. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, they, uh, I see more of them now that I'm in Yamber than I did when mm. they moved out of home in Brisbane. Um, and likewise for my friends, you know, it's a, it's a great location, transport's, you know, easy. And uh, the, the one 
person I found in Yamba who um, I'd call him disgruntled was somebody who, with his wife, had moved from the central coast of New South Wales down near Gosford to Yamba when the one pretext of doing that was to be closer to their grandchildren who live just up the road in Lismore. And uh, that just hasn't materialised. It's, it's mm. still a half an hour away by car from Yamba. And, you know, he's, you know, I was playing golf with this guy and he's just grumping. I oh, know I hate Yamba. You know, I came up here to see my grandkids. I never see them except at Christmas. And we've left all our friends behind. And he's classic example of someone who should have done their research first or he should have just kept going and moved to Lismore where his grandkid is. So... Mm. Yeah. It's, it's a really good point. I think um, my dad often muses that the grandchildren always want to come and see him, even without us, now that they're a bit older and they can get up there. Um, because he made it really fun for them in the first 10 years of their lives as well. And he made his home a bit of a destination for them and took them all on school holidays yeah. and yeah. took them to Macca's for ice creams. And he says, yeah. that's because I wanted them to come once they were busy and, and I, um, I wasn't as cool. He said, if I start early, <laughs> I'm going to get them later. <laughs> Um, and he's, he's got the perfect philosophy on it because, you know, he worked when I was young. Yeah. Um, he's, he's got these grandkids' hearts and minds wrapped around his little finger. You know? well, I think um, to, um, so. to Kate's point, you know, and, uh, you know, like I, I road tested my location by myself, but the ability to do it with Ingenia is, is you know, um, it, it just gives you that flexibility too. So that's the one thing I would urge anyone, you know, pick where you want to go, but then road test it, whether it's, you know, by you know, checking out the Ingenia home or just renting somewhere like I did. And, you know, you'll get a, a feel for the place pretty quickly. Like I, I thought I'd rent for two years, which I, I did, but after six weeks, I realized I'd made the right decision. So, but if I, but if it didn't work out, I would have gone back to Brisbane and, you know, I had, I, when I, I had still had my house in Brisbane, uh, I kept it until I was sure. And then I sold it to fund my new lifestyle in that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Rory. I've got a couple more questions to get through. We're going to extend it. People seem to be very interested in everything that you're saying. So I'm excited to keep asking. So the next question is for Bill, but Kate, you probably have thoughts on this too. So do jump in. Um, a viewer who's recently retired says she and her partner are looking to tree change from inner city. But even when looking at a smaller property in desirable areas like the Dandenong Ranges and Mount Eliza in Victoria, the prices of homes are still pretty similar to the price they'd get for their city home. So Bill, what are your thoughts? Should they hang on to see if capital city house prices increase further? Or does the risk that regional prices keep outstripping the city mean they should jump ship now? And Kate, you might want to comment on whether a land lease community can offer a better price or better value proposition in some of those desirable tree change areas. Take some of the Bill. forecasts are that uh, the, the regional pricing may cool off a little bit uh, because with the, uh, the vaccines being rolled out, this is only theory that's been thrown around, with the vaccines rolling out and the pandemic hopefully coming to an end, the uh, more Cap City bosses, if you like, or owners of businesses may start to acquire their staff to come back into the city to work. And so uh, it may not be as desirable to, to live that far from work or they may not be able to work from home anymore. That's just one factor that's been talked about that may cool off the pricing in regional areas. Um, not sure whether Kate's got a different opinion on things, but it, it should be, you should still get better value buying in the regions. It's, um, then, then again, look at trying to buy in Noosa or Byron Bay at the moment. Um, Alicia, Byron Bay's uh, had 40% growth. So I mean, Even to rent, I think it's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, look, I think there's two factors. One is that gap between Capital City, if you, that's where this um, viewer is, is selling. Um, certainly regions, um, as, as Bill outlined before, there's still a massive gap. You're still significantly um, putting more money in your pocket for an equivalent style property in any regional area, despite that. And yes, probably at the moment, the sooner you do that, um, you know, that gap won't, won't be as large. The second factor with lifestyle communities is because it's a land lease community, that is you purchase the home and you lease the land, you're normally paying... Um, you know, it's 60 to 80 percent of an equivalent value. So, because you're not paying the land component, it as a model is putting more money in your pocket anyway. So, uh, if you take a home in a land lease community versus a home in the, in the same suburb, um, you're paying less. So, um, you know, it's it's a second opportunity to put more money in your pocket. And you know, let's face it, that sense of security and sleeping better at night with a bit more money in the bank and um, you know, funding that that um, Bucket list is is certainly worthwhile considering. 
Oh, very much. On the same topic, Kate, I've got another question. Do you know if you have to be a full age pensioner to qualify for rent assistance or can part pensioners qualify? Um, part pensioners, and I, I will refer to Rachel Lane's comments, who is the expert in this space, but if you qualify for a part pension, you will qualify for rent, Commonwealth rent assistance, but I certainly advise you to get you know, specific advice on that. That's really good insight. It makes a huge difference to the week-to-week uh, the -week costs, doesn't it? Um, back to Bill now, another question. If demand is high and stocks low in the cities, which is what we're all hearing in the property reports now, like now, right now, what's it like regarding supply and demand in regional areas? Uh, that's a good point. I haven't really seen much data on that. I would imagine that um, if, if the data shows, which it does, that people, uh, there's double the amount of people searching for properties in regional areas, the, the demand's gonna be pretty high there as well. And I think in spots like we talked about the high, high price spots like um, Noosa and, and Byron Bay, you, you'd find the demand would be, um, the demand to the supply would be very tight. So if, if more people are going to certain areas, then the demand is naturally going to be higher. So I, I would think it's quite high at the moment compared to what it would normally be in a, in a normal phase of a market. Again, Kate might have more insight on that. Yeah, I think, um, Bill, the lead indicator of that is days on market. Um, how long it's taking someone in those regional areas to sell their home, which is a function or a reflection of the supply and demand equation. And days on market in regional areas is falling significantly, um, mm -hmm. up to 30% at the moment. Um, I know we've got a lovely new community in Ballarat. It's days on market's falling through the floor. Lala in Victoria is falling. Um, most of our communities, even um, we've got communities in Brisbane and, you know, those days on market, it's really shortened down, which really is that, lead indicator of supply and demand. And at well, the auction levels we're seeing, we're starting to see a little bit of a shift towards auction rather than private treaty in some of the regional markets. And if, as I quoted a little earlier, if some of those areas where the auction clearance rates in the 80s and 90s, that again would feed into the into the notion that it's, yeah, it's days on market are pretty short and the, the stock's tight. Especially if you can do five days on market at an auction, that's pretty scary. Um, the right time to sell, hey, and then and then look to the next move. Uh, and I think that for the last couple of years, we've been waiting for these moments, haven't we? A lot of people have been sitting in their homes wondering if that dream moment would come and what it would look like and if they could have that dream active in their mind. We're still all dreaming of that international holiday that we can't have yet. So, but you can have... We're having, um, we're having lots of conversations with people at the moment who are saying, wow, I want to buy, but what if I sell my house too quickly and, and my new home's not ready? Um, you know, the, benefit, <laughs> the benefit we have is our sister company, Ingenia Holidays, has an enormous amount of holiday parks. So we've got a lot of our buyers who are cashing out, taking a great price, putting their stuff in storage and going and having a holiday. And, and any of our buyers get quite a significant discount with a gold car to stay in our awesome. holiday parks. So people are, uh, you know... Are what a nice little pack. <laughs> so, you know, you don't have to find yourself homeless in mm -hmm. between your selling and purchasing. Look, and no one wants to get caught in the middle either, do they? I mean, that's no. very much the, you want to get that good exit when the market's strong, not get caught on the tail end of a boom. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Just on, as an aside to that, you're seeing this across a number of areas. So I do a radio show as well as, as, as the real estate. And, and it's the number of people that are buying uh, and spending some of their money on mobile homes to go holidaying. They're buying four-wheel drives to go mm. camping and exploring <clears> the <throat> islands. They're... It's, it's, it's all going into lifestyle. Lifestyle's become the, because we can't go overseas, lifestyle's becoming where we spend our money, lifestyle and property, so. And Ingenia were always he ahead of the curve the there because they had the caravan <laughs> car parks at the, the back of many of the communities where you can pull up and park your caravan. I've been to some and seen them, it's fabulous to see. So I, I must say, um, that is all we have time for today. We've run a little over time. I apologize to everybody, but, but we basically haven't lost a person during our goal over time. So thank you very much for hanging with us. Um, I'd like to thank you, our fantastic panel, for making the time. It's been a really nice um, chat and hopefully very educational for everybody out there in the community. I'd also really like to thank Ingenia Lifestyle. Australia's premium operator of lifestyle communities for over 55s for sponsoring this masterclass. If you loved Bob's story about living in an ingenious community, there's many places you could live with that type of lifestyle too, in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. Um, and you can find more about that, uh, find out more about that at ingeniolifestyle.com.au, um, which is on the screen for you now. 
to everyone who's tuned in today, thank you for watching. You'll receive an email in the next few days with a link to the video of this masterclass. And in the meantime, please stay healthy, stay safe, and keep dreaming. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,